Formal charge is one of those things that comes up a lot during um, revision sessions. Kids often really struggle with this because I think it's got this like fancy formula of like the number of electrons minus the number of lone pair minus half the bonding, something like that. Um, but if you know anything about me, it's that I'm really, really bad at memorizing equations. And so like for me, formal charge is really about looking at what charge something has on it by comparison to like how many electrons it should have had. So all we're doing is comparing like how many electrons belong to an atom versus how many it should have belonging to it, if that kind of makes sense. Let me show you what I mean and hopefully we get this a little bit more. So. Both of these A and B are valid Lewis diagrams. Um, they both have complete octets. Um, there's like no problems with these whatsoever. They're both fine as a Lewis diagram. The question's really about like which one is most stable, which one is preferred out of the two. So let's have a look at doing the formal charge for each atom individually. So all that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the periodic table and how many electrons nitrogen should have in its outer energy level. So nitrogen is in group 15, so it should have like five electrons belonging to it in the Lewis diagram. So currently it's got, if we zoom in on this a little bit more, so it's got one electron here and two electrons here. So it's got these two electrons belonging to it. It's also got like each of these is like one, two, and then one, two, and then one, two. Each of those bonding pairs is like a pair of electrons. So of those bonding pairs, one of those electrons kind of belongs to the nitrogen on the left, one belongs to the nitrogen in the middle. So when I'm talking about counting how many electrons belong to the nitrogen, I'm saying, okay, the nitrogen should have five electrons, but right now it's got one, two, three, four, five electrons around it. So this one is actually perfect. It's got a zero charge overall. So another way of thinking about this is that you're literally like putting a circle around the atom that you're looking at. You're taking the number of electrons that it like should have according to the periodic table and you're subtracting the number of things inside the circle. So here I've got one, two, three, four things inside the circle. So this gives me a plus one. I could do the same thing with the oxygen here. Remember oxygen is in group 16, so it should have six electrons. So we're gonna go six minus, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this gives me a minus one. So it kind of makes sense because each of the like dots, the lone pairs, like belong entirely to the atom. And then the oxygen kind of has like real estate in like half of the bonding pair. So we're just gonna count that bond as one electron because it kind of has like one of the two. It makes sense by comparison to the equation, but if you're really bad at remembering equations like me, maybe this system also works better for you to remember than remembering the equation. You do, you do you, <laughs> whatever works. Let's have a look at the other one. The other one looks like this. So again, nitrogen, remember, is supposed to have five electrons. Uh, in this, like, oh, uh-oh. In this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five minus seven gives me minus two overall. So it's got like two more electrons than it should have. So it coming out as a minus should kind of make sense to you. The middle nitrogen is actually exactly the same as the nitrogen above it. It's got exactly the same bonds to it. So this one is still five minus four. That was right. Five minus four gives you a plus one. And then this oxygen at the end um, is six minus one, two, three, four, five to give you a plus one. Okay, so if we're looking overall at these and deciding which one is um, more stable. First of all, you want your formal charges to be minimized. You want them to be closer to zero. So this one actually makes way more sense. This is the preferred Lewis diagram. Um, if you've got ones that have really similar formal charges and you're really like, I have no idea how to work out which one is more stable, the second criteria you can use is like looking at the most electronegative atoms and checking that those atoms are holding the negative charge. So the most electronegative atoms are more likely to be holding those lone pairs. Um, and so that's more likely to be the preferred Lewis diagram. So hopefully this helps some of you at least. Um, I hope you have a great day.